Hello, hello, hello. Real quick, I gotta get my glasses. What is going down? What? Woo! Let's get situated here. Hello, students. How are we doing today? Now, of course, we missed. If you, if you did miss last stream, we were talking about bears and around the subject area of that. We got into some good amount of information, the basics of at least the anatomies of the bears but now today we're going to be focusing more on at least somewhat of the history and well the mystery behind bears and the psychological parts of it of these beautiful creatures yeah we're going to ignore that one but we got a lot to cover today and we're going to go right into it if you haven't already, make sure to spread the news about your boy and tell him the good word. Oh, Tyler, Tyler's a good friend, of, good friend of the show. You're about to start start up on the RF test. Hey man, good luck on that. I hope I hope I like for the for the people at home that don't know, Tyler's been kicking ass. First of all, you need to check out his channel on making art. Kicking ass on it. Absolutely love it. And but no, this man's a genius, just like moi. He has he's been able to work both sides of the brain, which has been pretty Pretty nice, pretty nice. To say that, you know, I have favorites. Oh, I wouldn't say so, but, uh, hey, you know, you know what's good. Since for right now, since it's just me and you, Tyler. Hey. Alrighty. Right now, I'm sending out the big announcement for all you people that are already sitting up and cozy. <laughs> Sorry, I had myself a nice hearty meal. Bruh. 
Y'all get ready, all right? Can everyone, can you all hear the music and stuff like that? Does it look good? Does it sound good? All righty, students. So, for today's stream, we got a lot uh, planned out uh, for you today. So, of course, today's subject is that we are going to be focusing on bears. Now, of course, as we, I'm going to go ahead and just repeat myself again. We were part on um, focusing more on the anatomy of bears and diving more deeper into that. Well, of course, we have to follow deeper into it and see why these crazy beasts have decided to become part of our culture. So, to get more into it, of course, I decided to do a little bit of quick, uh, quick pop up for bears in our pop culture. And of course we okay let's get right into it right started with it oh yeah by the way also too um thank you thank you animated tag big train space cat snuggy tyler all the follows and stuff like that we're already about to reach our goal and stuff like that we are moving up and up i'm thank you guys so much Now, the things about uh, bears that we need to figure out is, is what is it, what where are their influences? I have questions that I want answered today. What were their influence on our society? What created this? You know, what created the Goldilocks? Why bears? Why Winnie the Pooh? No, Pooh, just like the Paddington Bear here. And of course, the best. In a place, of course, to get all the factual things is Wikipedia. So, here we are. Now, culture depiction of bears. Bears have been depicted throughout history by many different cultures and societies. That's very true. I was going to say, if anything, what was your most influential bear? I think mine probably was Smokey Bear. Only you can prevent wildfires. I think that was uh, I think that was my number one guy. Not there. I like uh, I like him. He's a sturdy guy. Kind of represented more, uh, more of of a bear that I like. But okay, bears are very popular animals that have featured many stories, folklore, mytholo mythology, legends across uh, the world, ranging from North America, Europe, and Asia. How far? How far do bears go? I wonder. I guess, yeah, history. History of bears. Oh, here we go. Bears are the youngest of the carnivore families. What? Having arisen from dog-like ancestors. Oh, so, no, that would definitely make sense. Because a lot of the smaller ones, they would dive, I'm gonna dive deeper into that. During the Ecosian Epoch. Ecosian Epoch, what? What is that? The 
Eocene Epoch is a geological epoch that lasted from 56 to the, the, to the good years, the back in the day type stuff. I see it. It's the years. It is the second epoch. Epoch? 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 La 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 la? Hmm. I don't know. Do not know. All right. The earliest bears had the characteristics of both dogs and bears, with heavy set features and blunter teeth than those of the true dogs. The true dogs, that's a little biased. Okay. Modern bears, including Asia, Asian black, sun, and sloth bears. We talked about those on our last session. That was really dope. Modern bears appeared to be in Eurasia around five million years ago during the late epoch. These bears were uh, relatively small animals. So they're probably more related to the, uh, to the one thing. That'd be wild. The extinct. Oh shit, what? The extinct giant short faced bear. Damn, what the fuck? Damn. I mean, honestly, bears. Damn, look how big he is. Damn. Short face bear. Those things. So I wonder how, like, polar bears maybe go up to, like, the shoulder of that guy. And immediately we're getting, you know, we're getting to a, just a level, a level size of just pure mayhem. Damn. That's wild. Because you always, like, knew, like, in prehistoric areas, like, eras on like how big these guys were and that's that's wild on just like how uh, big they gotten well actually just how small they gotten because like they can what was it what's the average bear height average bear height so to be I don't, yeah, I think the tall, I think the bear is, I think the polar bear is probably the tallest. How tall? Which equals, oh, wow, really? I thought they were taller. I remember like, I remember like my, um, what was it? We used to have, um, we used to have this place, you know, place where I used to live on with, uh, it, what was it? The show was called, it was a museum. And it was this place you know, called like you know, this. Damn, that is wild. That is wild. All right, well, cool, 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 cool. Damn, that is, they were huge. Oh, is that what they kind of look like? And dinosaur is very brought back. Nah, I'm good. I'm good, homie. Oh, it go okay, okay. It goes into that one. That looks more like the um, not the sun bear, but the other one that we talked about. Class, I forget what it was called. Mm. That is wild. Among the extinct bears was a large land living mem memelon carnivore. The giant short-faced bear was twice as big as today's brown bear. Twice! Unlike modern bears, it was lightly built with long legs and feet that enable it to run fast. Damn. Cave bear. Oh, 
Oh my gosh, so stoic. Look at these. Oh my. Hey. <laughs> Damn. Oh, look at the look at the pecs. Look at that deltoid. You can see it. It's bulging out of the fur. Oh, didn't even skip a leg day, my dude. I see you. I see you. You got a nice forearm there. Nice. 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 Yeah. Uh that's how. That's how you do it. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Some cracking the pecs there. I see you. And he's flexed it too. He's got the like, he's got the pose going. He's like, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. That's wild stuff. Look at his beautiful face. He's just, he's got like a long stare. My word. What could you be staring at, boy? What, what long gaze tempts you? What do you want? Do oh, I feel I feel like it's calling for me. It wants me. What do you what 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 do you want from me? Oh sweet bear of mine. Oh, what is that, doo doo? Well then. Alrighty, alrighty, alrighty. Let me just. Sorry, I gotta hide some stuff underneath here. Who did this work? I want to figure out who did this work. Extinct in cave bear. I'll do it this one time. I'm sorry, class, but I am required. Answer, call out. Blake, make sure to do your homework. Eat your broccoli. And most of all, stay in school if you are in school or stay with the job. <laughs> okay back to the lesson so this was an extinct cave bear oh twitter tattoos nice actually we'll be using twitter to discover maybe more online stuff i think that would be kind of neat don't look at these jowls Oh, look at that.
bears. Okay. Bears. So perhaps one of the most famous extinct bears is the cave bear. Yes, which lived in the Europe for several hundred thousand years. Not that one. This one. This was probably the one that got DiCaprio, maybe. Until it became extinct around 10,000 years ago. Its bones have been found in caves from Spain to Carcou. What? Carcus. The largest deposit remain oh, was found in Austria. In the Drenchen Hole. Caves for bones and over 30. Thousand cave bears. Is the music too loud? Hopefully it's not for All right. Back to it then. Cave drawings created by Ice Age humans show they occasionally hunted cave bears for several thousand years. The Martin Brown and the cave bear coexisted until the cave bear became extinct. Hmm. Well, there you have it. All right. And then, of course, now we move on to from the history from humans first getting involved with bears to now bears getting involved with us. There's evidence of a prehistoric bear worship. Though this is disputed by archaeologists, it is possible that bear worship existed in the early Chinese and Anyun cultures. The Anyun cultures, also known as Esu, it's historical Japanese texts are an East Asian ethnic group, Indonesian. Dang. These are really the inhabitants of Hokkaido and some of its nearby Russian territories. Interesting. So the Japanese discovered bears, or at least were the first ones to uh, figure it out. Interesting. All right. Hopefully my volume is pretty good. We're going to set a couple more adjustments on this stuff. Sorry, students, just adjusting some volumes. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. We're slowly but surely getting things uh, going around here. You know, hey, oh, oh, hey. We'll be bouncing around. But it's all good. Now, the priest. Now, okay. So, it was first uh, the Chi uh, so the Chinese and Anyuan cultures. Uh, a a new a new a new I knew I knew in cultures the prehistoric Finns or Finnish people oh okay 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 cool 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 Siberian are more recently Koreans considered the bears as the spirits of their forefathers ah we're getting some like that's interesting that would be wild if um if they actually tried to do, uh, what am I trying to say here? Um, of course, like, you know, like everyone's seen brother bear, like, hold on. Everyone's seen brother bear, right? You, you seen, you, you seen it. Uh, oh, okay. Just want to make sure. Just want to make sure. Oh, you haven't, you haven't. Okay. Okay. No, no, that's fine. That's fine. It's fine. You can just get the fuck out. How about that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Get. I did, we're we're talking about bears here. You're you're part of this class. I'm sorry. No. Get out. Yeah. Oh yeah. Hey. No. You forgot something. 
There. All right. Let's get back to it. All right. So, the image of the mother bear was prevalent throughout the societies of North America and Eurasia. Image of the mother bear. In many Native American cultures, the bear is a symbol of rebirth because of its hibernation and emergence. Oh, okay. Got it. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. In Korea, we're, uh, we're going to be bouncing around here. In Korea, uh, mythology, a tiger and bear prayed to Wanu. Excuse me. Hag Wanun is an important figure in the mythological origins of Korea. Ah, he plays a central role in the story of Dong Gung and Wing Gong, the legendary founder of the Go Xian, the first kingdom of Korea, the Hong Wun is son. Ah, so a tiger and bear prayed to it. The son of the Lord of Heaven. The son of the Lord of Heaven. That they became human. Ooh, maybe there's some qua, quas, croissant, croissant, some cross reference between it. Maybe so. That's our, let's see. Gave them 20 cloves of garlic and a bundle of magwort. I've seen that. Ordering them to eat only this sacred food and remain out of the sunlight for 100 days. The tiger gave up after about 20 days and left the cave. However, the bear preserved and was transformed into a woman. Sorry. The bear and the tiger are said to represent two tribes and sought the favor of the heavenly prince. Oh, love triangle. I mean, why not the tiger and bear kind of get together? Just saying. Just saying. I'm a just saying. I mean, it's back in the day type, so I don't know. Maybe. However, the bear preserved and was transformed into a woman. They wanted the prince. The bear woman was grateful and made the offering to the Hong Kong. However, she lacked a husband, a husbando, and soon became, no, soon became sad and prayed beneath the divine perch. I love that tree. It's very, ah, I can't wait for summer. Rest the tree. To be blessed with a child. Omanong, moved by her prayers, took her for her wife and soon gave birth to a son named Doug Dan Gun. Dan Gun Wang Yong was a legendary founder of the god king Gojoseon. Oh boy. To be blessed with the child, so moved by her prayers, took her from his wife and soon gave birth to a son named. She was a legendary founder. He, to, who was the legendary founder of, oh, first ever Korean kingdom. She got into royalty. Mm -mm, nice. I wonder. Do you have a quick visual of this? Can we? Oh, what? This beautiful Bengal tiger and this funny American bear have been living together for more than a decade. This is the friendship of three incredible animals that the destiny bonds together forever. This is awful. Like, you know how many people are going to see and have seen this? 7.1 million people have already seen this. And it's probably motivated so much. So much. When was this made? Back in 2008? Okay, okay. Maybe not. But like... 
Oh my goodness, I wonder. I wonder, hold on. Their story began in 2001 when the police carried out a drug raid in Atlanta. When they went. All right, not surprised. There we go. To the basement, they found something that must have dropped their jaws. Three cages with exotic animals, a bear, a lion, and a tiger, kept in terrible conditions. The three cubs were frightened, underfed, and infested with parasites. The lion was kept in a cage oh. so small that the bars were... No, it's cute little nose. Oh my goodness. Digging into his mouth. Simba. The black bear was in the worst condition of the three cubs rescued, with a severely ingrown harness digging into his flesh because it was never loosened as he grew in size. Oh my the gosh! Was so ingrown that his flesh had begun to grow over and around it. <gasps> a surgical intervention was required to remove the harness. Oh my goodness! Are they going to show it? That's the only Jeez. time the three oh, brothers don't. have ever been separated from one another, and the tiger and the lion became extremely agitated because of it. Oh my and goodness! For the lost member of their family to return. Oh. After they rescued the Georgia Department of Natural Resources, brought them to Noah's Ark Sanctuary (NAAS), where they received emergency medical treatments. Moreover, oh all three of the cubs made a full recovery and found a new home at the sanctuary, where the trio have been together ever since. Oh. The American bear, Baloo, and Shere ah. Khan, the Bengal tiger. Look how big he is. Hold up, can we get like... Oh my gosh, that's the cutest, most dangerous bing bag chair ever! Oh no. Look at that thing! Oh, he's just a big... He's just a big clump of fur! Oh! My goodness. And after the characters from the Jungle Book. The African lion, meanless, owing to an... Why does that look like a dog too? I can almost see it. I can like kind of see like the pit bull features. Earlier operation was named Leo. Thereafter, the three buddies became wildly known as the BLT: the bear, the lion, and the tiger. Nice. Oh my gosh. Surprisingly, despite their differences, the trio preferred to stay together, and the sanctuary allowed them to share the same living space. Baloo, Leo, and Shere Khan eat. Sleep and play together. That's and hilarious. Without grooming and affection from one another, ah. rubbing and licking each other. Indeed, the sanctuary reported that their terrifying early months in life bonded the three together, and they are truly inseparable, despite their obvious differences. Shere Khan, the tiger, is the most mischievous of the BLT, always pouncing on Baloo and Leo. Also, seeks out affection, <laughs> the most strengthening their bond. Meanwhile, languid Leo normally seems lethargic and yet is ready whenever it's playtime. <laughs> the timing on that, geez. Um, yeah, lions are like the laziest thing ever. Baloo is very confident and relaxed bear, just like his fictional counterpart. Nice. Unfortunately, on August 2016, Baloo and Shere Khan said a final farewell to their brother Leo. No! That was found with an incomparable mass in his liver. No! The took a heart wrenching decision to let Leo go for good. To commemorate Leo's memory, a lion statue has been placed on his grave. During the Leo going home celebration, Baloo has randomly walked over to Leo's grave, rubbing and licking the statue just like he has done to his brother for many, many years. All right. Now we got to figure out how do you get a bear? Oh, what? No. How to get a bear? How to survive a bear or big bear family? We're one big bear family. No. No, you're not. Ah, uh, ah! Uh. Did you see that? No. Ah. Uh. Oh my gosh! It just takes one big chomp. We're one big bear family. Look at that. Ah! Uh.
Oh my goodness! You can just imagine it. Could just fit his whole. It could just fit inside of his head. It's not like it's licking him, just like for nothing. But it's just like you could just see it. You could see it. You could see the whole part just coming in and then stomping on, not stomping, chomping on him. I couldn't imagine that. Couldn't imagine that at all. Like. Hold up, what's the, um, like the jaw power of a bear? Sloth bear, otter, dog, cheetah, okay, sloth bear. Black bear, speckled bear, Asian black bear, Malayan sun bear, jaguar, giant panda, brown bear, polar bear with the top. Like these guys are taking up the charts. You see that they got, hold on, let's see, let's see. We got one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, six taking over the top 10. Bears are, oh my gosh. Terrifying. And you want, has the strongest jaw of all the car, mm, carnivores of uh, land mammals. Is very large. Sorry, hold up. Who the fuck is trying to. Oh, okay. Okay. Sorry. The polar bear was the strongest jaw of all um, carnivores land carnivorous carniv carnivore land animals. It is very large. Uh, bear approximately the same lies of the omnivores Kodiak bear, a boar. It is the most carnivorous member. Of the bear family and throughout most of its uh, range, its diets primarily consist of ringed bear. Uh, ringed. Okay. Yeah, like, what's the what's the jaw like? Of course, in all land mammals. How do we? Oh, okay. Is it like back up on the top then? How many Newtons or whatever? Like, how do we, how can we figure that? How many pounds? What am I strong as jaw? Jaw power of a bear. Like, I'm sorry, am I, am I typing in the wrong words here? No, I'm probably using the wrong. Google, take my information. Uh, and we'll buy it's PSI. Okay, 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 okay. Gorilla. 1200. Jaguar. Damn. It's subspecies of brown bear that inhabits the North America. This large species is seven feet tall, 800 pounds, pure muscle. That's the exact same bear that's about to eat this guy's fucking face. Look at that. 1600 pounds. With ancestors like these bad boys. That's what, like, that's the dad. That's her brother. That's her. And you're going to just come up and try to strap that in? Nah, dude, what? Dude, humans are stupid. How tall is it? No, no, no. What was I, what was I just looking at? Yeah. 1,200 PSI. I couldn't imagine that. I don't know. Yeah, air compressor, I guess. All right. If other times we drive you nuts, right? 
Jim and Susan. Oh. Run a center for orphaned wives. Oh my in gosh. In Otisville, New York. It's but his head is the size of half their bodies, the dude. That walks in the door and everybody lights You got to be kidding me. <laughs> you know, and it's kind of funny because they just love ah. him to death. Uh, you are helpless. Okay. That thing just And I'm the one that fucking does comes work, around and he just has to walk in the door. This is Jimmy, a 21-year-old Kodiak bear rescued from a closing wildlife park. He's just one of the 11 bears that lives ah. They knock you around a little bit and stuff. Nothing, you know, not maliciously, you know, but you got to watch. You don't get scratched or poked in the eye or something. Uh, hey, ah! No oh! What are you doing? Oh, my goodness! In the eye or something. Hey. No. There you go. There's your 1,200 PSI. There's your 1,200 PSI right there. Just like, how are you gonna, like, that's awful. Oh my goodness. Are they gonna try to sell us on this for thing? for 21 years now. Mm -hmm. Got him as a little cub. And uh, he's been oh, a damn his it. life. No, oh. Chat. Students, students, look at that face. What, where is it? Oh my goodness, look at that face. Ah, uh, look at that face. <laughs> and Susan developed deep bonds with the animals. Like burying one of your family members. These bears mm -hmm. need to eat up to 90 pounds of food every day. Everything from baby elks to spawning salmon, berries, and plants. Damn. Ready. And here, the bears enjoy a daily diet of meat, grains, bread, <laughs> you guys ready to eat? and veg. <laughs> you guys ready to eat? Hang out. Yeah, let me just like test it out real quick. You guys ready to eat? Num num nums. That's wild. That's wild. Okay, 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 okay. Let's get back into the culture bit. I'm part of it. The bears are mentioned in the Bible. What is that? Bible. It's a collection of religious texts. Christians and Jews. The second book of Kings. Related the story of the prophet Elisha, Elijah, calling in them to eat the youths who taunted him. Legends of the saint, uh, legend of saints taming bears are common in the Alpine zone. In the arms of the Bish Roperick. Okay. The bear is the dangerous totem animal. the bear is a dangerous totem animal tamed by saint corbinin oh is that the photo right there yeah there's the boy there he is <laughs> it's like bro did he just fucking just tame that thing just, bro, I think he really did. Just like, and then he's just thinking, like, I just totally fucking tamed that thing. <laughs> that guy's like, get your, oh my god, get your horse off of, get your bear off of my horse. Oh, no, save get no. <laughs> good boy, good boy. <laughs> oh my goodness. It's wild stuff. Wild stuff, chat. All right, all right, all right. Ah, national and regional symbolism. Bears, like other animals. Ooh, sorry. May symbolize nations. Who else? Who is trying to use the bear? Eurasian brown bear has been used to personify Russia. That is very true. I mean, gosh. What was the one? Um, Russian event. Watch bet money. Can we get it? Can we get it? Now, where is the 
Where's the one? Uh, the movie. The movie. The movie. Like Avenger. Russian Avengers Bear. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is there just like... We'll mute that. Look at that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There he is. There he is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like a Russian story or whatever. But yeah, old boy could turn into a bear. That's pretty wild. So, of course, yeah, that definitely seems logical to use that. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> In Finland, the brown bear, which is also nicknamed as the king of the forest. Ah, uh, that's yeah. King of the jungle, the lions, king of the king of the forest. That's catchy, but all right, I see how I see how it is. Let's see here. What about Madrid, Spain? East side of the Porta de Sol has a statue of the bear, the strawberry. The bear and the strawberry tree. The statue is created by a sculpture of Antonio Navarro and Santa Fe. And inaugurated on 19, back in 1967, January 19th. Represents a bear, supports his palms and strawberry direction and attention towards one of the fruits. A real life form of Goat of Arms Madrid. What? Coat of Arms. Oh. Capital of Spain has its origin in the middle ages but has redesigned because for the logo includes a shield and so much that bit okay i was referring to hmm. ah here we go cosmology what does the bear mean in All of the universe bears what are you trying to tell us? Speak to me, bear. We must know. Who are you, bear? Speak to us. Constellation of yours a major. Ursa major. Ursa Minor, also known as Little Bear. Yo, you guys remember the show Little Bear? Oh, what? What? No, that's not it. But yeah, it is, but like, what was that? What the fuck does that have to. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, the owl, the chicken. I oh, yeah, the duck. Uh, was there a rabbit? Was there a rabbit? I remember that. Yeah, 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 yeah. There was the cat. This cat. I thought there was a. Maybe I'm thinking of Winnie the Pooh. And now they're in the ocean. Sure, 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 sure. Yep, yep. Oh yeah, it's one of those dumb. And they're flying. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. Cosmo cosmology bear boom <laughs> scratch done ding what is this um the great and the great little bear named for their supposed resemblance to bears the nearby star arc arcturus means guardian of the bear as if it were watching the two constellation, Ursa Major has been associated with the bear for as much as 13,000 years since the Paleolithic times when people were showing butt ass and chasing that shit from the Ice Age. Look at that. Mm -mm. Damn, people were thick back then. All right. So let's see here. 
It is proposed by some authors that the old uh, Norse warriors, the Berserkers, yo, that's badass, drew their power from their bear, uh, from the bear, and were devoted to the bear cult. Yeah, 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 we'll we'll dive into that. That looks interesting. That looks interesting. Hold up, is there a video on it? Bear cult. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Hello, my dear friends. Okay, okay. Hello. Hold up. We'll 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 get right to you. We'll get right to you. Um, ba 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 ba. All righty here. Bear worship. Bear. Also known as bear cult or is a religious practice of the worship of bears. Founding many North ethnic religions such as Vasquez, Germanic, Itchy, Slavs, Finns. There are also the num Okay. There are also a number of deities in Celtic Gual. And Britain associated with the bear of Dacians and Thracians and guess what? Gatis or Gits or several oh were in order to worship bears and annually celebrate the Bear Dance Festival. Woo! What were they up to? Oh, that's hilarious. I thought that I thought they were doing like the Michael Jackson lean there. Fucking bear. <laughs> the existence of ancient bear oh, bear cult. Ooh. It was not the mere presence of these bone. Oh, the ancient bear bones have been discovered in several different caves and are believed by some archaeologists to be evidence of a bear cult during the thick age. It was not the mere presence of these bones that intrigued archaeologists, but their peculiar arrangement. They were arranged in a penis. No. While some of these findings have been interpreted to indicate the presence of an ancient bear cult, certain analysis and discussions have led to contradicting results. <gasps> According to the in, in a wound, based on the information archaeologists have about primitive man and bear cult, if Neanderthals, what? Neanderthals? Neanderthals? Neander no, mm? What? Words? Yeah. Neanderthals did, in fact, worship bears. There should be evidence of it in their settlements and camps. Most bears' remains have been found in caves, however, and not within early settlements. Hmm. Bears were the most worshipped animals in the... Okay, that's all right, whatever. Do people still do this? You got that. Oh, the Navij Bear Festival. The Bear Festival is a religious festival celebrated by Indian Navi. Navik and Gil Gil Gilyak are Indonesian are indigenous ethnic um, group inhabitants inhabiting the northern half of Sakhalin Island, the Lower Amur River, and the coast of the adjacent Russian mainland. Hmm. Russian mainland. Okay. Bears were captured and raised in a corral for several years by local women, treating the bear like a child. The bear is considered a sacred, earthly manifestation of the Nivik, Nip, Nivik ancestors in the god's bear form. During the festival, the bear is dressed in a special made ceremonial costume and offered in a banquet to take back into the realms of gods to show benevolence upon the clans. After the banquet, the bear is killed and eaten in an elaborate religious ceremony. The festival was arranged in a rel uh, by relatives to honor the death of kingsmen. Kinsmen. The bear spirit returns to the gods on the mountain happy and rewards the mother of a bountiful forest. Damn. Ooh. 
another bear festival. There are annual bear festivals that take place in various towns and communes of the Pyrenees region. I'm not even going to try Fiti de Arur. Wars. De Lors. De Lors. Fiti de. Oh, no. <clears throat> Held on Candlemas. Have you heard? Also known as the Feast of Presentation. Of the, of the Presentation of Jesus. Feast of the. Per Feast of Virgin Mary and the Feast of the Holy. Oh, so these goes hand in hand. Is a ritual in which men dress up as bears, brandish sticks, terrorize people in the streets. Of course, amazing. Formerly, the festival is centered on the bears mock, mock attacking the women, trying to blacken their breasts with soot, which seems scandalous to outside first-time observers. Yeah, yeah, that would make sense. But according, according to testimony of someone who remembered the olden days, before that, the festival that involved elaborating staging, much as, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> guy from back in the day uh, came in and was like, no, 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 that didn't happen. That didn't happen at all. Just like, oh, uh, okay. Damn. Mock attacking, trying to blacken their breast with soot. That's wild. I mean, it's back in the day type stuff. Pagan cult, the Finnish, considered the taboo animal and the word of, for bear was a taboo word. Oh. Honey hand. Huh. Eh. Calling a bear by its true name was believed to summon the bear. Bear hunting and killing and a killing what what? Bear hunting and killing a bear was followed by a party called Pajazet. Paja. Pajazet. Dating to pre-Christian times. Ah, so people were savages back then before they heard the good word. Understood. True name was believed to summon the bear. Okay. With a ceremony intended to show that the bear would be an honored guest. A honored guest instead of a slaughtered animal. And that its death was accidental. In order to not anger the bear's spirit, the skull of the bear was hung in, into a tree which uh, was venerated as a tone. Venerated? What the, f what the fuck does venerated mean? Oh yeah. Big, big boy. Hello, big boy. Venerated simple past tense. Pa oh, thank you. Venerated to regard with respect and reverence, treat as hollowed. Rever okay. Damn. Hot diggity dog. Damn. That's so wild. You never knew this stuff about bears uh, being involved in certain like tribalistic cultures, Eastern Slavic. I know we're kind of going up. I kind of scrolled down. I got too interested with the other parts here. Let's see here. The bears were the most worshipped animals in ancient Slavs during pagan times. It is associated with the god Volos. Yeah, I can see the resemblance. One is a major Slavic god of earth, water. <laughs> earth, water, sorry. And the underworld. Okay. His attributes are wet, woolly, hairy. And dark and is associated with cattle. Okay, well, the harvest, wealth, music, uh, magic, and trickery. It just sounds like a bear. It just sounds like the label they would use for um, big gay men. Like, so it was a bear. It was a bear. Understood. Yeah. Wooly, hairy, a little bit mischievous. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Um, animal worship. Those are always great. Um, oh yes. So, okay. So original, well, originally got us, uh, got us into here was the bear cult. So let's. Hold 
I'm gonna quick set that up for you students here. All right, all right, all right. Okay. Here we go. It's a 30 minute clip. We're only gonna watch certain parts of it. Um, this is specifically pertaining to la 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 la. Uh Nordetown Norris. G um, I wonder if it's related to the specific ones that we were looking at so far. The title just says the bear, uh bear and Sami and old. I think we were talking about that, right? Some me. Hold up. I know. I'm. I'll, I'll get. Uh, I'll be able to pull up the video real quick, guys. Hold up. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um. Some. It's so, okay. The some me people are indigenous. If you know you, their people and having sap me, which today encompasses large parts of Norway, Sweden, Finland. Okay. So Nordic. Okay. 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 okay, okay. So yes, it does have relatability to it. Cool, 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 cool. I didn't want to like throw you guys into like a specific scene and have it be off. It'd just be a no go, no, no, no go. So let's see here. Sorry, guys, hold up. All right, hey, I'm gonna um, before I start this video, we're gonna wa uh, we're gonna watch some bear cult stuff, and then we're gonna get more into more modern anistic times for the culture and um, culture of bears. But beyond that, make sure you get a good look of our boy here. Yeah, get that thumbnail going. Actually, hold up. All right, I will be right back.
Ooh. All right. Hello, hello, students. All right, it's good to be back. It's good to be here. It's good to be with you. All right, let's get on to this video. All right. How are you? I'm Ari Thurger, and today I'm going to talk about the bear in both the Sami and in Old Norse pre-Christian religious panorama. So, bear it with me. I love that. I already like his like tapestry and stuff. This guy's legit. I can already tell. He's got the beard. He's got the hair. He's got the tapestry and stuff like that. Of the guy's jaw being left out, which is completely wild. Showing like a little bit of intestines there. And so that's pretty cool. All righty. So <laughs> now, before we start, first, I would like to dedicate this video to my patrons who have been asking me about this specific subject for a, a very long time. <laughs> and I want to dedicate this video also to Naomi Passion Flower, who is also my patron. And some time ago, we were speaking about this exact subject. Secondly, I'm very happy to see that I'm in a sort of position where I can help others in a way. It's a hard world out there and I know how it's like to struggle to have a job and well, making money to have a living and to survive. Dude, come on. I came here for some North religion. What's going on here? You about to give me your whole backstory? What's going on? You wouldn't imagine the terrible jobs I had. <laughs> anyway, I'm happy to know that I can help others. And before we start this video, I want to help a friend of mine. So just give me a few seconds if you, if you would be so kind, please. All right, my dear friends, let me show you this beauty. Woo! Oh, please be D&D &D involved. Peace. This was sent to me by Revengard True Norse Viking Shop. And the words True Norse Viking are very well placed here. And let me tell you why. These aren't random pendants of New Age Viking imagery designs. These are handmade, high quality work with proper metal. And most importantly, these are all replicas from actual Old Norse Viking Age. Okay, 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 okay. Like, not to be rude on this guy, I, like, I understand, you know, he's got his own thing to show, but hold up, let me just make sure. Hey, everybody, make sure to go support that guy. Because, I mean, you know, like, Obviously, he's trying to help out a friend. That I love that. You know, like obviously, he's trying to help out a friend. That I love that. So yeah, definitely. All right. La 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 la. Okay. Um, yeah, it's related to this subject, uh, designs of but make sure, like, you know, support it. But we have to see shop Raven Guard, link in the description. Yeah, go check out that stuff, please. Because, yeah, of this historical period in Scandinavia, and question what was the role of the bear in old Norse mythology? or the importance of the bear as a religious symbol in pre-Christian Scandinavia. Give us the good word, right. my lord! Where to start? <laughs> when it comes to pre-Christian religious beliefs uh, in the northern hemisphere, uh, we have a couple of animals who hold a powerful significance, and one of them is the bear. Like, man, that sucks. Like... Christianity really came in and just fucked up like the whole game. Like, 
we had religions that involved like total different animals. We had bear cults and stuff, which I mean, first off, some of them, and some of them were trying to blacken women's breasts with soot and stuff. But uh, you know, it, it's a give and take. It's a give and take. I understand that. But it's just like, dang, like religion was legit. Like that's what it was. And dang, if we like, you know what? We missed it. We missed our chance. That's what happens, students. We have to. Make sure to not on the Patreon platform. Good. I've already wrote uh, an academic work about the bear as an important. Not saying Christianity doesn't have its um, positivities or anything. Just saying, like you know, I mean, if you want to talk about some epic stuff, that's pretty wild. Like you know, re like religion pertaining to a very specific animal. Like just imagine how cool life would be if. Or just how interesting, I wouldn't say cool, but just how interesting it would be if life just straight up had different religions. Like if we just, a religion that celebrated ants, like festivals and stuff like that, to insects. That would be very interesting. That'd be wild. That'd be really, really wild. Maybe that might be the next subject. We might dive into a little bit of cultiness or something like that. Yeah. Um, you, um, you students watching online on YouTube, on YouTube and stuff like that, make sure, write, uh, write down, tell us what, uh, tell us what you want on to dive more into the research for and stuff like that. And people who are watching also, if you feel free to, if you have recommendations, please give it out. This is a lot of, we're having a lot of fun here. This is good. Um, bu -bu -bu -bu. And religious symbol in the middle ages. And I've made a video. On Fuck. That was the video. Okay. Also about this uh, subject almost three years ago. Oh shit. <laughs> That's a thumbnail. Oh, this guy's an expert. Oh, that's good. If we look into Northern Europe, uh, we goals. realize that among the Sami people, we noticed that there were elaborate rituals involving the consumption of bear meat for attracting the spirit of the bear. So the spirit of the animal could be of assistance in particular moments and events. And this is a tradition with animistic roots, obviously, which is shared among many Finno-Ugric peoples. So we would assume that the importance of the bear in well, neighboring regions of that of the Norse people, old Norse people, would surely influence pre-Christian Scandinavians, pre-Christian old Norse people. However, uh, the bear for Scandinavians, for Old Norse people, was most often regarded as ordinary food. Surely, we have written sources concerning the symbol of the bear and related to something more mystical, such as narratives about human and bear sexual relationships, as well as the figure of the bear Sarkre. And Shout out to my furries out there. Your shit was being represented way back when. I see you. I see you. The Hulfadin. And what was that? Say that? What and you as call well me? As the figure of the Bear Sarkre and the Hulfadin. And mm -hmm. I shall eventually speak a little bit about these specific figures further ahead. Among the Sami, it was custom to give offerings to a Seiri stone or Seiri altar which are usually either natural rock formations with strange and unusual shapes or stone structures to which the Sami would give offerings. For instance, fish was the primary sacrificial element serving as a form of communication between the human community and the divine. So the Sami would grease Seiri stones with fish oil in order to ensure present or future fishing luck. Still done today. Understood. Anyway, during the process mm. of bear hunt, the bear was awakened before the attack to ensure that its wandering spirits were all present at the time of its death. We talked about this. We found it out on the Wikipedia. Um, each bear cult, certain bear discussions, placement, argue that the placement of these remains.
Um, calling a bear by its true name to be sudden. Bear goddess. Hello, space cat. Um, we're figuring it out. Currently, right now, at least, um, if you are just uh, just joining us, currently, right now, we we are what we have found out, at least through past religions, bears have been they have been seen to be certain things. The fear of bears have been recognized, of course, with some uh, with some cults actually using it as a taboo. Bear being itself being a scared language, almost being seen as summoning it and then other parts of it um basically bringing down and um i believe oh gosh who was it um oh yes 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 right here right here right here um the pajit ceremony intended to show that the bear would be an honored guest instead of a slaughtered animal so basically this is like you know still pertaining to a lot of um spiritual parts uh, parts to it and only one a hunter. Which I think, like, that's what he's probably diving a little bit more into. The one selected through divination was allowed to attack the bear. You can see in this... Um... <laughs> Fuck that! <laughs> nah, Dave, come on, that's your turn. You got it, bro. Like, that's all you, man. You're gonna get this bear. Like, dude, the tribe's gonna be on your side, bro. Okay? You're just, like, just like, you know, that, what, what's a Nordic name? I don't know. Ashley is really, it's really dig, digging you, man. But if you get this bear, you're going to be able to tie the knot, man. Okay, you get that bear ass and then you, she gets your bear ass, bro. That's how it's done around here. <laughs> Being the single guy. A uh, hunter. Correction. Like being the single hunter on just like on going after on going after that spilling. It's, it's one of those like old traditional tribe senses that it's just like, you know, the single person must go out there and you're the chosen one. Just be like, no wonder there wasn't like any written many prophets out there just because people were doing dumb the, stuff like that. The one selected through divination was allowed to attack the bear <laughs> you can see in this um a great he respect did it. expressed towards the bear fairness after the bear was killed the animal was welcomed in the village as an honored guest the community during the ceremony would eventually feast on the animal's flesh while making certain not to harm his bones, the, the animal's bones, which would later on be carefully buried after the ceremony. And indeed, in uh, archaeology, many bears, uh, bear bones, <laughs> have been found indicating the nature of this widespread tradition in the north, in Lapland. And indeed, it's curious to see this uh, response. Getting uh, it would be possible to like, recognize a human. I want you guys to be able to watch the video for yourself and also like, you know, it's a whole thing of like, I don't want to watch this and like, you know, leave, you know, leave, uh, leave a little bit of mystery for this guy. He put a lot of hard work in this video, so I'm just kind of skipping around, getting the tidbits of it. Woman who had been transformed into a bear when the bear was killed, she's on Sami drums. In Sami legends as well, we have accounts of Noaidit who could transform themselves into bears and it would be possible, according to the legends, uh, it would be possible to like, recognize a human who had been transformed into a bear when the bear was killed, skinned and under the bear's skin, a human belt or, uh, or money pouch or well, other ma human made objects would be found. So, you can imagine, of course, <laughs> there are Sami legends of men who would transform into bears and obviously have sexual intercourse with human women mm -hmm. resulting in a sun skin, what? a human belt or uh, or money pouch or well, 
other human-made objects would be found. So, you can imagine, of course, <laughs> there are Sami legends of men who would transform into bears and obviously have sexual intercourse with human women, resulting in a son with the strength of a bear, which is in fact um, in Saxo Grammaticus Gesta Danorum, we have. Uh, what do you say? And obviously, have sexual. And under the bear's skin, a human belt or, uh, or money pouch or well, other made, human made objects would be found. So, you can imagine, of course, <laughs> there are Sami legends of men who would transform into bears and obviously have sexual intercourse with human women, resulting in a son with the strength of a bear, which is in fact um, in Saxo Grammaticus Gesta Danorum, we have uh, an, an interesting account of sexual intercourse between a woman and a bear. A young girl befriends a bear at the bar, no, she befriends a bear and the bear welcomes her into her den, into his den, and well, one thing leads to another. Those were crazy days. What happened? <laughs> and the bear eventually impregnated her. This woman gave birth to a son after the, the bear's death, and the boy becomes the progenitor of the Kundling dynasty. Dang, see, that's what I said. Like, this is what's up. You bring in the pre-Christian religions and we got, like, we got guys, gals coming in and out of their bearhood, fornicating. Like, that's how you do it. That is how you do it. Alrighty. Um. Um. Sorry, guys, I am. There's no less requirements. Sorry, guys. Um, give me just a quick second. I think we're able to figure out certain things here. Weird, that will go. Or, for instance, in Rose Saga Rauka, uh, we have Bodvar, who is the pro the product of a bear and human relationship, sexual relationship. And this hero can transform himself into a bear to help his king in battle. So, in the figure of Bolvar, we notice the embodiment of both the motif of human and bear intercourse, sexual intercourse, as well as that of the bear circle. So, these Sami legends were known among the Norse. So, this starts to shape into something. And these Sami legends may very well have influenced 
the Norse people, uh, as we have um, the figure of the Berserker, which could either be a reference to a warrior uh, dressing in a shirt made from the skin of a bear, or actually a reference to being naked, which I, I shall explain uh, this further ahead. But the point here, for now, is that the figure of the bear circle, either naked or dressed in a bear's hide, uh, is often someone referred to as having immense strength, like a bear, a gift supposedly bestowed by Odin as it comes in the sagas. But don't worry, in this video I shall speak about the figure of the bear circle, and well, as well as the Hulfetin. Sands on him, and he nearly kills his own son too, so it's a dangerous person. Banish the person into the wild places of the world. Berserker, um, for bear, mine in the ground, bush. Today, the Vikings of pop culture are almost always depicted as yelling and screaming while they could yeah. not control themselves, but killed men or cattle, whatever came in their way, and did not take care of itself. While this fury lasted, they were afraid of nothing. Egil's saga, for instance, a shape question, which can be quite helpful in overcoming challenges they might face. In addition, we also hear of supernatural advantages which accompanied a transformation, such as an invulnerability to normal weapons. The short beard, berserkers carried the usual mix of vintage, held ratings, as all sorts of variant berserker qualities. In fact, though they often get glorified today, they were actually the villains of many sagas against Ooh. whom the heroes fought. So, to recap, the three main qualities of most berserkers are their association with animals, their enraged state, and their rejection by the community. So, okay. Got you. So basically just an e-boy himbo, right? No, it's a furry. That's a furry, right? Association with animals, enraged state, rejected by the community. That's so berserkers were furries. Gotcha. Beyond these, one can find all sorts of variant berserker qualities when diving into our sources. So how do we package all this into a simple unit of history for discussion in our video? The real answer is that we can't. No, oh, thank but you. If <laughs> all right. <laughs> Psych. All righty, now let's go into pop culture. Pop culture and bears. Bear scene, culture depictions of bears. We had it up yesterday. Bears with that. And pop culture. All right, Wikipedia. Whoop. You failed me. List of fictional bears. Okay, fine. Thank you. I'll just. Gosh, I gotta call it out. Comics about bears, fictional bears. Where do we want to start off with? Bears and literature, bear mascots, polar bears, songs about bears, video games about bears, cultural depiction of bears. Okay, let's see. Yeah, let's see. Let's see. Baron Park is a multiplayer board game designed. Bear and Henry 
Oh, that, that that's the Spaniard thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bear suit. It's bear suit. Our type of costume character creation uh, resemble furries. The best one. Most realistic bear. Clever little tailor. It's a uh, German fairy tale collected by uh, Brothers Grimm as. Ooh. A proud prince. Quick points. A proud prince set a riddle to her wooers and sent them away. And when they could not answer, the three tailors came. Two were known for their cleverness and skill, and the third is uselessness. Oh, shit. The prince asked them two colors of the hair. He offered the bear not nuts, but what? Okay, hold up, hold up. Sorry, sorry. I did skip ahead because I was bored. The princess demand that he spend the night with a bear. In the <laughs> you want this ass? <laughs> Damn. Wow. The tailor took one away. This, uh, wait, okay, sorry. Prince demanded, the princess demanded that he spend the night with the bear as well. And in his stall, the tailor began to crack nuts. I bet he did. Offered the bear not nuts, but pebbles. The bear could not crack them. The tailor took one away, substituted a nut, and cracked it. The tailor began to fiddle, and the bear danced. The tailor offered to teach it, but he had to cut his nails. Of course, he trapped it in a, va in a vase and left it there. As you do with bears. The princess agreed to marry him. Like, holy shit, you just trapped a bear in a fucking vase. Hell yeah. <laughs> the other two tailors freed the bear. He came after the carriage. The tailor stuck his leg out the window and threatened the bear. With the claim of their mm, of there were a vase, it ran off. My boy flexed on the bear. Nice. Wow. Cool. All right. Nice story. Ooh, is the third single by artist. Quest of rating is the eleventh episode. No, no, no. Stranger Among Bears, Teddy Bear. Teddy Bear. I believe like this was like kind of like like if everyone would probably understand like Teddy Bears were like the first OG of it, of it all. It's a stuffed toy in the form of a bear developed apparently simultaneous by toy makers Morris McTom in the U.S. So the U.S. invented it. Nope, Germans also did it. Named after the president, Theodore Teddy Roosevelt, the teddy bear became a popular children's toy celebrated in story, song, and film. Yeah, it's true. Teddy bear cops program? What? Because police, fire, and emergency officials found that giving a teddy bear to a child during a crisis stabilized them and calmed them. Created the teddy bear cops program distributed teddy bears to police, fire, Throughout the United States and their use in providing teddy bears to children in a marjan size. Cool. Way to the poo, definitely. Um, Ted, wow, yeah, Paddington Bear and Ted D. Oh, I didn't hear this one. The Indian tell me language action uh, thriller a uh, film written and directed by film stars a teddy bear and it's oh, hold up, what? Streaming from midnight, what? Can we can we look up a trailer? Can we look at the trailer? Are we allowed to look at the trailer? I think we are. I don't worry. I'll put on like it, it looks like epic music. I'll just put on epic music during it. it what? Um. Ba 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 ba. Teddy. Indian movie. All right. Oh, Disney's helping it out. 
Okay, 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 okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me throw in some. Let me throw in some action. Oh, you guys can hear it. Hold on. That's pretty dope. We would definitely have to check that out. All right. And now let's see the final bits of what is left, what is coming up around the end of our lesson here. What is going on with bears on in today's news? Hashtag bears. What's the top one? The NFL. The Bears are only a team in the NFL to never have it. What? Okay, sure. So it seems like a lot more of a teddy bear stuff. Hold up. Let me, since Twitter is a fucking landmine, let me, let me go through some of the stuff. Bears, 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 bears. A lot of NFL stuff. Um. Uh, 300 years ago in the village of... Oh, okay. Here we go. 300 years ago in the village of Birmingham, it was night uh, night of bears. Revolt. So the bears overcame their handlers and ran loose into the crowds. The hounds ran wild and packs freed from fighting in dangerous bears. They turned upon the people. Shakespeare's bears. I have looked... I have loved reading this book sometime. Shakespeare's bears. Well, there you go. All right, let's see if there's any uh, other stuff on here. Wonder if not. We could just keep that part up. And there was something on the goddesses. Actually, yeah, no, 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 yeah. Let's wait on the tweet, on the tweet stuff, and hold up because there was something, um, was specifically requested by one of the students here. Space Cat, I did not forget you. We are looking into that. So, the bear, oh, the bear goddesses and bear god. Bear goddesses and gods across ancient cultures. Gods and goddesses of ancient, of ancient, what? Gods and goddesses of the ancient world held a connection with certain animals. This is because of ancestors beliefs were animistic they believe everything on earth had consciousness wildlife was sacred in ancient times the bear is one of the most powerful and the most feared of the animal kingdom dating back thousands of years the people of europe left their mark on cave walls some of these drawings uh, drawings were of bears moreover shamans have revered the bears for its power but also for its motherhood qualities healing abilities and healing abilities bear medicine is strong medicine it's no wonder ancient ancient gods and goddesses were connected to the bear learn about the bear goddesses and bear got here hmm. let us see artemis the typical illustration of artemis greek god of the hunt depicts her with either a hunting dog or a stag. However, one of Artemis' most sacred animals was the bear. Artemis had domain over the forests and all wildlife within. Anytime a bear was killed by the Greeks, Artemis would lay a plague on the people as punishment. She came in like... Who dares kill my fuzzy wazzy? Die! Who all kill bears? I mean, valid. Woo! It was fun. 
Callisto. Another close association between Art Artemis and the Bears of here. Are the Bears of one of Artemis's followers named Callisto. Callisto was a nymph. Demi god nature spirit. And as the follower of Artemis, women were charged to stay chaste and pure from men. Callisto was lured into having relations with Zeus, <gasps> who impregnated her. I mean, that's what Zeus does. He's an asshole. <gasps> when Artemis found out, she changed Callisto into a bear. Other versions say Athena was angered by Zeus' impregnation, the nymph. And so she turned Callisto into a bear. Either way, she became the bear. Ooh, our Artio. We don't know a lot about Artio, the bear goddess of ancient Celtic gods, but we know we know she was intimately connected to bears. A few pieces of evidence we have of her cult's existence were found in Switzerland and southern Germany. The bronze statue depicting Artio feeding. Oh, 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 oh. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. We saw this, we saw this, we saw this, we saw this. It was within the bear cults, right? Bear worship. The bear goddess speaks, yeah. Other dodgy of all races. That's the same one. No more. Was a Celtic bear goddess. Evidence of her worship has been notably found at Burn. When Burn is derived of the gluteus. Nice. Yes, he confirmed. Confirmed. Goddess on Goddess or two was predicted. And Hell yeah. Look at that. That's awesome. That's, there you go. This is what we're talking about, students. You get researches, you find those connections. It's so cool. That is so, that is so much fun. Oh, I love that. Oh. Artie feeds the bear with a bowl of fruit in her lap. But could it be the other way around it seems to me the goddess is being confronted by the bear and she is not backing down there was once a great tale about this encounter i am sure however over time the lore has been lost the inscriptions of the burn statue translated into for goddess arshio i wonder if it's like arshio or arteo We may never know.
Idiko Hungarian. Oh my goodness. Sorry, I don't know if it's like super loud for you guys, but it's really loud for me. Finnish bear god. Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. Much of what we'd known of the Hungarian bear goddess, Itiko, has been lost in time or perhaps is just not readily accessible by research methods. However, according to Encyclopedia of Spirits by Judy Kilai, it is Itiko was a goddess of the forest and wildlife. One of her most sacred animals was the Ba. She was the goddess of the hunt, but also protector of the forest animals. Healing goddess of Finland. She's associated with woods and wildlife, just like Artemidius. But her main attributes were is her healing abilities. Okay. Seen a lot of seen a lot of like um relatabilities between strength, healing, and stuff like that. Ah. Okay. No. Okay. Odin is a popular god among Norse Germanic pagans, and his cult was spread nearly to every part of the modern world. He is known as the All Father, the One Eye, the Terrifying One. Okay. Hmm. Because of this, warriors and magicians of ancient times sought Odin for his knowledge and ferocity. When depicted, he is usually illustrated as an old man with white hair, beard, and cloaked and carrying a staff. One of his eyes is missing. A sacrifice Odin made to tap into the wisdom of the well of that word. Urar. Odin is almost always flanked by two of his totem animals, the raven and the wolf. However, the same, some claim Odin may also be guarded by the two great bears. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. Oh, oh. Uh, yeah, let's get back to it. April Fool's Day, Veteran Record published paper. Is he's Brunus. Uh, where are we at? Oh, yes, 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 yes. All right, students, the last bit. The last bit of the class. Let's see what modern day has to say about the Beaz and stuff. Did not know this about, uh, never heard the story of um, Shakespeare's bear. 300 years ago in a village of Birmingham, it was the night of the bears. Wow. Hey. Dope. That's pretty dope. Alrighty. So let's see here. I'm looking at, I'm looking at a little bit more. Lucky enough to visit such a magnificent place in the bear shelter. The bears are so cool. Check that out. Today I was lucky enough to visit such a magnificent place as a bear shelter. As the bear shelter. I had a lot of pleasure making these photos. I can't convey how much I wanted to hug and squeeze these cuties. Damn it. Oh, gosh. Oh, that's a little sad though. It's a little cage, but. Oh, look at them. All right. 
Um, let's see here. And of course, you know, you got to have the sports side of things coming in and stating their claim. Oh, this is, what is this? Not due to human incompetence, it's due to human compassion. Everyone's waiting for this mama bear and her kids to cross the road. Look at this little brave bastard. Mum, you don't need to carry me. I understand traffic. I finally get the concept. The baby brother is yelling, put me down. Meanwhile, there's a sister and another sibling back here. The sister yells, oh, bugger this, I'm going to cross too. She's not just crossing, she's doing a friggin' TikTok dance. She's singing Billie Eilish. Stop, what the hell are you talking about? Get my pretty name out of your mouth. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's, and that's how it goes with a lot of bears. I wonder... We, got, we still have enough time, students. Let's... The human impact on bears. Jesus Christ. Those are bear, the more... Ah, oh, hell no. What the? What's wrong with this guy? Look at this guy. Look at, look at this guy. He's crazy. Look at that guy. <laughs> crazy. What is this? Uh-uh. What is this guy trying to do? Oh, look at the cute cub. No. That awkward, <laughs> that awkward moment when you get bit by a bear and there's absolutely nothing you can do. Look at, <laughs> look at his face. Look at his face. Oh, he's completely worried. That's hilarious. Can I zoom in on this guy now? Yeah, that'll do it, man. Let's see here, let's see here. The old tried and true. Oh, here we go. Pubs in USG. The human effect on bears habitats use are me uh, mediated through food biomes changing. What? Human effects on bear habitat use are mediated through food biome changes bear tolerance of humans and their impact and human tolerance of bears large-scale changes in bear food biome um, bear food biomass has been caused by conversion of wildlife and waterways to intensive human use and by the introduction of exotic pathogens bears consume virtually all human foods and have been established in former wildlife but bear but bear use has been limited by access air pollution has also affected bear uh, food biomass on a small scale and is likely to have a major 
future impact on the bear habitat through climate warming, major changes in disturbing cycles and landscape mosaics warped by humans have further altered temporal and spatial pulses. Although bears tend to avoid humans, they will also use exotic and native food they will also use to humans. Subadult males and adult females are more often impelled to forage closer to humans because of their energetic predicament. Here's the resource here. If humans desire to preserve viable bear populations, they will either have to accept increased risk of energy associated by preserving habit habituated animals or continue to crop habitual bears while at the same time preserving large tracts of wildlife free from significant human intrusion. You got that? Basically, the biggest part is you got to to crop habitual bears. What does that mean, though? Preserving habituated? Habituated? What the hell? Snuggy Hulk, you're right on time. We're getting close to the end of make or become a custom or use to something. We're actually hitting up, up all around the end of the session. Great stream. Absolutely, absolutely loved it. Had a, now we're having ourselves a great time. We talked about, um, was it to give you kind of a quick review? We talked about certain histories of bears and certain cultures involving in the sections of bears where they was a certain um, bear cults were being made uh, made for certain bears, mainly pertaining to three, um, what was it like, feelings towards bear, uh, bears themselves. For they pray to them for strength, um, motherliness, and healing powers. Yes, you'll be able to review. I'll send you the class online. Line. And all the future online students, please tell me what was the favorite, uh, what was your most favorite thing that, your most favorite, your favorite thing that you learned today? All right, we just, you know, we hit a bunch of new things. Um, but no, I'm super excited on at least reviewing uh, more of this stuff. And, but uh, to finish off, uh, finish off with the major part, a uh, major part in recognition is for us to handle. Uh, bears, we need to first be able to crop habitual bears. Basically, uh, yeah, we need to back away from bears and stop getting into their shit. Let them roam free. Otherwise, you'll end up like this asshole. Got a little nibble. Nice. That's a guy. That's a guy who's just like, I got bit. And there is absolutely nothing I can do. Oh, right, yes. Um, for uh, for the online students and the students that are here today, our next class will be uh, will be at the same time tomorrow, seven to nine. We might we might go a little later. We might not. Um, but I got something special in store for you to finalize this uh, bear excursion that we've been going on. We'll review everything that we've um, gone through for maybe a good 30 minutes or so, just to have fun with it. And then I have something in store for us to play around with that I'm very interesting, interested to see, you know, see us mess with. But, um, but yeah, I think, um, I think this will be a good, uh, good ending point. Ladies and gentlemen, this was a great stream. Students of all ages. Hopefully you've enjoyed this stream. My students here and the students online uh, watching. Make sure if you ever uh, want to actually check out the um, the live student uh, student sessions while I'll be teaching um, live, please come, uh, come over and make 
come over to the stream channel link will be down in the description below and um i'll be posting of course i'm posting every stream uh, directly right after so you'll be able to watch it and but yeah make sure you know, make sure to keep learning stay afraid you stay safe out there all right otherwise this guy will get you all right guys you guys have a good one it was happy teaching you for my online students watching this on youtube make sure to like comment and subscribe this has been professor void signing out